Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Buck Brief. On this episode, Carolyn Levitt is with us now. She is the national press secretary for uh, the Trump campaign. Mike, what is the specific title, actually? I want to make sure I get that right. (laughs) I appreciate that, Buck. The specific title is national press secretary for the Trump campaign. All right. I, I nailed it. Just making sure. I was like, am I am I getting this one right? I don't want to start. That's never good. I will tell you a trick that a a very well-known Fox News host once taught me on set off camera was whenever you're interviewing somebody, if you don't know, like, I, you know, we've talked many, many times, so I'm not going to forget your name, but especially if it's a first time, doesn't matter who it is, first time you're interviewing somebody, write yes. their first name on a big piece of paper, like a, like a big version of their first. Because if you sit in there, you're like, well, Bob, what do you think? And they're like, well, my name is John. I can kind of throw the interview. First impression you- the first impression you don't want to have, and they'll never forget it. So that yeah. is very good advice. You and to be fair to me, your title changed recently, right? Because you were running the PAC comms, and now you're running the comms for the campaign. So let, let's let start. Since you have that, we have South Carolina coming up this week. As people see it, we won't know or hear this. They won't know yet. what. But I think we kind of know, right? We kind We kind of know what's going to happen you in know. South Carolina. So what's going to what's going to go down here? I mean, is Nikki Haley going to take it all the way to the distance, get humiliated in her home state and then drop out? Well, we'll have to see. We certainly know what's going to happen in South Carolina. I know the media doesn't. It's so funny to watch the New York Times and CNN and the fake news just continue to talk about this primary as if it's even a race. You had uh, one of the networks had a town hall with Nikki Haley just yesterday, and she's up there answering questions. And I'm thinking to myself, this is such a waste of time. She has not won a state yet. She lost by a historic proportion in Iowa. President Trump beat her by more than 30 points. He won won more votes than any presidential contender on either side of the aisle in New Hampshire. She didn't walk away from Nevada with one delegate because she didn't even participate in the caucus. And now she is headed to her home state of South Carolina, where she's due for another embarrassing defeat in her own backyard. We are 100 percent confident that President Trump will walk away from South Carolina with a dominant victory, just as he has in the other previous early primary states. And if Nikki Haley unwisely wants to move forward after that defeat in her own backyard, it's not like the road ahead gets any better. I mean, you look at the polling for the, all of the Super Tuesday states, every single one, President Trump winning by more than 40 percentage points. And I've asked Nikki Haley surrogate campaigns uh, surrogates myself when I've been with them on television. Name a state that she can win. She can't answer the question. Her team can't answer the question. They have no pathway to victory. And it's really just an utter waste of time at this point. How much of it do you think really is at some level being funded by Democrats as, if nothing else, just a speed bump to Trump's uh, clear pathway to being the nominee? You know what I mean? How How much of that do you think is really at play here versus Nikki Haley's got nothing else going on, so might as well take it to the end. I think that's the entirety of her campaign. It She really has become a full-blown Democrat, and she is funded by Democrat donors. In fact, one of her big donors, Reid Hoffman, is a Democrat who is currently funding some of the witch hunt lawsuits that we've seen against President Trump. Reid Hoffman funded the Eugene Carroll lawsuit that was a, sh- a shameful uh, disgrace and a travesty of justice in the New York court, ordering him to pay $83 million unbelievable two-tier system of justice that we have one of the same people that is funding that is funding nikki haley's campaign so when you have donors like that in your ear propping you up and writing you checks i suppose you look in the mirror and think you might have a chance at this thing but it is just not based in reality she is running for the republican nomination yet she's targeting democrat donors she did in voters too she did it in new hampshire she was calling on democrats to infiltrate the republican primary switch their party affiliation to vote. And now she's calling on them in South Carolina, which is an open primary, to vote as well. So we're calling on Republicans to elect their Republican nominee and get out and vote for President Trump as they have in Iowa, in New Hampshire, in Nevada, do it again in South Carolina. Actually, early voting is underway now. So if any of your listeners are in South Carolina, go cast your ballot for the only Republican in this race, and that is President Trump. What is Trump's plan with the we we just had the settlement last week um, with what 300 something million dollars for the business practices that the banks and Trump and everybody was fine with and everyone made money and there was no problem until 
as we know, the problem is just Trump for these people that they just hate him and they want to stop him from being president again. It, so does he have to put up the 300 million to appeal it? I, do, well, what's the I mean, really, there's a blend now, right, between the legal and what the campaign is doing, because the campaign is going to have to look at the legal schedule. What's the plan with this or what does he know what the next steps are uh, that he's going to take? The legal team is definitely still reviewing next steps, although they have said that they absolutely will be appealing this decision by Judge and Goron. I mean, you just look back at the beginning of this case. It was brought forth by Letitia James, who's the attorney general of the state of New York, who campaigned for that public position, not on getting the violent criminals that are running free across New York State right now, especially in New York City, but getting Donald Trump. And she fulfilled her campaign promise with this case and she was granted a judge who despises president trump just as much as she does judge arthur and goron is a disgraceful individual who was laughing and smiling for the cameras in the courtroom like it was the best day of his life he is not someone who actually looks at the law if he were this case would have been laughed out of his courtroom but unfortunately it moved forward and letitia james and the judge in this case made their decision on it long before the trial even began they denied president trump the ability to bring witnesses to the stand and they had ludicrous uh witness testimony and ruling in this case like the fact that mar-a-lago is worth only 18 million dollars i mean that is laughable especially to anyone who's been to mar-a-lago and can see that it is a beautiful estate and there's property down the road by the way that has nothing built on it it's literally just a acre of trees that's worth more than 18 million so the whole thing is laughable and ridiculous so this case in in itself uh, will be moving forward towards an appeal and as for the campaign you know president trump is is so tenacious he's determined to be on the campaign trail as much as possible the democrats want to keep him in a courtroom he will be in court now we know in march due to the alvin bragg case which is another miscarriage of justice in the great in the formerly great state now disgraceful state of new york uh, but he'll remain determined to stay on the campaign trail. He'll still be holding rallies as he has been since the beginning and visiting all of the key battleground states that we must win in November, all of which, by the way, he is leading Joe Biden in the polls as of today. Let's let's pivot to what you expect from your uh, opponents here on the Biden campaign in just a second. But first up, with the world favoring online investing, stock markets and cryptocurrencies, it almost seems archaic to some people to look at tangible assets, real things. But you want to be ahead of the herd, not following it, because we barely even carry cash nowadays. So why would it be a good idea to invest in something physical, right? Um, Because look at history. Look at what happens. Gold and other precious metals have been a sound investment for banks, governments, businesses, and individuals for decades, for centuries even. And there are some very clear reasons why. Primary advantage of adding gold to your portfolio is its stability. Gold is also a nice hedge against inflation, meaning a good defense against your cash getting eaten up by inflation. One popular advantage of investing in gold is nobody knows you have it unless you tell them. And in the unlikely event of a massive financial crisis, you can use your gold as currency. Go to OxfordGoldGroup.com slash free to request your free information kit or to make a precious metals purchase yourself. I've done it. I've worked with Oxford Gold for years, and I've gotten my gold from them. OxfordGoldGroup.com slash free. Again, that's OxfordGoldGroup.com slash free. All right. Uh, Ms. Caroline, what's going to happen here with the Biden? Well, first of all, are, are you some? Are you on? Oh, God, I can't remember if I asked you this already in the previous months. You think you're going to be facing off against a Biden-Harris ticket, right? I mean, you're you're as close to the Trump campaign as anyone can be, you're not preparing for some third part or third person, third option thing, right? We will be prepared for anything. Let's just say that. However, I think we do expect that they will have Joe Biden at the top of this ticket, even if that means they're rolling him in to on a wheel in a wheelchair uh, on November the 5th, if that means they have to run a basement strategy, which they we they already did. They already did that in 2020 using the excuse of COVID. So I think the Biden White House is determined to keep this man in power and they're going to do everything they possibly can to ensure that. Uh, so we're expecting him to be the nominee, but we're prepared for anyone that the Democrats put up. And look, Buck, at the end of the day, it really does not matter because it's 
the Democrat Party that has supported Joe Biden's administration and his policies since day one of him taking the Oval Office. It's the Democrat Party that has moved so far to the left in this country that most Americans cannot identify with it anymore. It's the Democrat Party that wants to shut down our domestic energy industry. It's the Democrat Party that wants to abandon our nation, ally, friend in Israel uh, and send millions of dollars in aid to the Gaza and to the Iranian regime, which has led to these brutal attacks in the Middle East. It's the Democrat Party that supports these wide open border policies that we've had. I mean, we've had very few Democrats across the country speaking out against Joe Biden's open border policy, which has led to a mass invasion of illegal immigrants all across this country. And so it's the Democrat Party that has led to the destruction and chaos over that we've experienced over the past four years. Uh, Joe Biden is just a useful puppet for them at, at this time. So no matter who we run against, our winning message of peace and prosperity, security and strength I think is a winning one. Do you have already a, a sense of the timeline for uh, President Trump's vice presidential pick? I mean, I, I'm going to have to ask, of course, who you think it might be or who's in contention. You can defer on that one, as I'm sure you probably will have to. But can we at least know when will we know? Well, we have to focus on wrapping up this primary and securing the delegates necessary to have President Trump be the official nominee of the Republican Party, which we expect will happen about mid-March if all goes well, which we are 100 percent confident that it will. And then it's the president's decision to make. So whenever he decides to do that is when it will happen. And uh, that's all on him. Okay, so he hasn't, there's not on the calendar, you know, May 10th or June 5th or we don't know yet, right? He's just going to do it when he does it. Do we know, do we know who some of the top people are that he's considering? I can tell you that he is still thinking about it. There's a lot of people (laughs) within the Republican Party that are great. I think we have a really deep bench and the president's asking around and uh, taking advice from those that he trusts. Ultimately, it's his decision to make. I'm sure it will be a good one. Something he has said publicly, publicly, which I can share with your audience if they haven't heard it, is that the president, his number one trait in that person is someone who can be a great president and leader for this country after his term is done. And so I think we have a lot of good options in this Republican Party. Again, it's up to him to make that call. Now, look, you know, I'm very fond of President Trump. I think he did a great job in office. But I do love my job in radio, so I don't think that I'll be able to take the VP slot if offered. You could just pass that along. I, I, Anyone's might be a little, on the table, Buck, so your name I mean, could be on the list. He might Anyone's be, on the table. I don't want to disappoint the guy. I feel very badly if I disappoint him, but I think i got to stay in my current place in radio and help from the outside, as, as, I, as I like to do. And then if, if I could, uh, Caroline, we come back um, in just a second here. I want you to tell everybody what it's like to be just a part of the campaign and, and you know, bring us into a little bit of the day of the life running, uh, well, being the press secretary for a campaign that's still going on that is going to be in for uh, quite a few quite a few interesting situations in the months ahead with all the trials and everything and the election. We'll get to that in one second. This couldn't come at a better time in our society. I'm talking about Patriot Defender. As you know, our rights are under attack these days and people can be targeted for political reasons, wokeness, if you will, comes for them. And it can be very expensive. You can lose your job. You can have all kinds of financial problems that come from this. But Patriot Defender has your back. Patriot Defender provides a no-cost legal defense to protect your rights, freedoms, reputation, and your way of life. Speak about a school board meeting about vaccine mandates and suffer the consequences. Your legal defense is covered. If your right to free speech is denied and you suffer consequences, your legal defense is covered company is called Patriot Defender, and their website is PatriotDefender.com. Patriot Defender will provide both open and concealed carry self-defense, and your right to defend yourself and your family when you need to will be protected. They'll also provide IRS audit assistance. So if your business, your income, or your reputation are harmed due to the weaponization of government entities, plenty of that going on, Patriot Defender can provide you with a no-cost legal defense. PatriotDefender.com. I'm a partner in this business. I'm a member as well. I believe in Patriot Defender. PatriotDefender.com will cover what others won't to protect you, your livelihood, and your rights. Okay, Caroline. So, so what's it like? Would you be the youngest press secretary in history? Trump wins. You become press secretary. Would you be the youngest? We love Kaylee McEnany. She was young, but I think you would be the youngest. 
Buck, I honestly have absolutely no idea. You're going to have to Google that one for me since you are a reporter, a radio host, a journalist. Uh, I have no idea. I haven't even thought about that, but possibly. I think Only so. 27 this summer. So there you go. You can go look it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would certainly, I, I, think, I think you would be, uh, and that would be a lot of fun, but we'll talk to you more when you're actually in the White House after Trump wins about all that stuff. In the meantime, uh, what's it like on, on the campaign? Like, what, give us a sense of, I mean, are you going into the campaign, going into campaign headquarters slash war room each day, looking at what's coming up? I mean, how is it? You know, I mean, you ran for Congress in New Hampshire, so you've run a campaign yourself before. What's it like now being press secretary for for the Trump campaign? First of all, it's a great honor to be part of this campaign, especially at such a historic time in our moment's history where you look at the current president that we have in office and never have we needed a change in leadership more than we do right now. And I think the majority of Americans agree with that. So it's great to be involved uh, at this level and it's nonstop. It's crazy every day. There's something new every day in Joe Biden's America that we are uh, capitalizing on that we are, uh, you know, sh shining President Trump's message to the American people and highlighting his policy plans to make this country great again. I do work here at the headquarters in West Palm Beach. We have a fantastic dedicated team. So many people are part of this team that you don't see on television or doing interviews, but they work behind the scenes so hard, literally 24 hours a day to make sure that this ship can continue to sail. And uh, it's a it's a great team to be a part of. And of course, we have a great boss in President Trump, who is just tenacious and works so hard, even as uh, young, younger folks here work on the team, it's hard to keep up with him. That's just how hard he works. And uh, it's only going to get a lot crazier as we continue to move forward into this general election, which morale is very high in this building. And we're very confident we will win November the 5th. How are um, how are preparations going for the uh, general election when it comes to uh, having uh, any the legal challenges that may come up in place before or even after the election. I mean, one of the big uh, issues of 2020 was obviously people might call it shenanigans that uh, that happened in different states. Uh, I get calls all the time. This is why I'm asking you this. I get calls from the radio audience, you know, on, on the show, and they just say, what has been done so that we can feel more confident this time around in the election process itself? What is the campaign yes. doing? Well, first of all, there has been some great progress in Republican led states across this country, particularly Georgia, which we know there was a lot of fraud that took place in that state in 2020. They have tightened up their election laws uh, to make sure that there's election integrity efforts. We also now understand what happened in 2020 more fully so we can better prepare for it. That means deploying poll watchers, to the polls, especially in those key battleground states, in those key counties where we saw mass election uh, integrity issues in the 2020 election. We also have lawyers that are working around the clock to hear the claims in the cases of, of Americans across this country who are complaining about their electoral processes in their specific counties and towns, precincts across the board. Uh, and then, of course, we're also just making sure that we're getting the message out there to the American voter that while you may not like the laws in your state, we have to play by those rules of that game until we have a chance to change them with Republicans Republican leadership. And so while the ideal situation, and President Trump says it all the time, is one day of voting, paper ballots, no machines, and voter ID, the reality is in this election, that won't be the case in many states. And so we have to understand the laws in each and every state. So a large part of what our campaign is doing is educating voters in every individual state across the country so that they understand their voting laws. For instance, in South Carolina right now, this primary is underway. While it won't take place, we won't know the results till Saturday night, voting is underway this week. And so if you have time to go vote this week, rather than waiting until Saturday, get out and do it because you don't know what life could bring you on Saturday. There could be a major storm or you could have a family emergency where you're unable to cast your ballot. And so if you're, the rules of your state allow you to vote early, we are encouraging people to get out and do that. And that's something that you didn't really hear uh, coming from Republicans in 2020. And that's a shift in messaging that we're certainly pushing. What's the main Trump campaign website these days? DonaldJTrump.com. There we simple. go. Nice and easy. <laughs> I don't know if it was like Trump, 
2024. Or DonaldJTrump.com, everybody. If you want to go see more of what the campaign is doing, follow Caroline Levitt on all the social media platforms that are uh, out there. See what she's up to, see what she's doing. And uh, great to see you, Caroline. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Buck.